Hi, I'm Paul Barron, a final year PhD student studying materials for nuclear fusion at the University of Manchester. It's Friday the 20th of November, and this is your Fusion News Update. We've got a nice selection of stories from the last two weeks, including 1. Auditors say EU's nuclear fusion project still causing concern. 2. How nuclear fusion is revolutionising medical isotope production. 3. Nuclear fusion startup Positron 4 sets magnetic field record. 4. Building a star in a smaller jar. And after all that, we have plenty of bonus content for you this week, including the chance to try your hand at running your own fusion reactor. 1. Auditors say EU's nuclear fusion project still causing concern. The ITER project, which began assembly of its experimental reactor earlier this year, is at risk of further delays and cost inflations, according to EU auditors. Europe's current contribution to the construction is over 12 billion euros, and the reaction start date has already been pushed back to 2025. However, delays and costs could increase further if the European Court of Auditors' worries come to fruition. According to auditors, Fusion for Energy, the public-private partnership set up to manage Europe's contribution to ITER has weaknesses in procurement planning as well as human resource management that places its operational effectiveness at risk. However, they also identify that positive steps have been taken to improve the management and control of the EU's contribution to the project construction phase. ITER is part of the EU's Horizon 2020 framework programme for scientific research. All other projects were found to be financially healthy, but similarly to ITER, some fell short on project management aspects. If you're interested in reading more about ITER, there's another general piece here in the iNews, link below in the description. 2. How nuclear fusion is revolutionising medical isotope production Medical isotopes such as molybdenum-99 could soon see a boost in production thanks to a new neutron generator technology developed by private fusion company Phoenix LLC. Molybdenum-99 is an important isotope in medical imaging and is used in the treatment of thousands of patients every day worldwide. Currently, the world supply is produced by only five facilities and due to its short half-life, it can only be stored for a few days before it decays away into nothingness. This new method of producing the isotopes uses nuclear fusion to generate neutrons, which can then induce fission in uranium, which splits it up into smaller, lighter isotopes, including the useful molybdenum-99. By using fusion neutrons instead of fission neutrons utilised by current facilities, low-enriched uranium can be used instead of its high-enriched counterpart. This confers advantages both the safety and security of producing this valuable resource. Willow Asenzo, a content creator for Phoenix LLC, says that Shine's production facility in Janesville, Wisconsin, is projected to be capable of supplying up to one half of the entire United States demand for molybdenum-99 when it comes along. This new method of isotope generation represents an exciting near-term application of fusion technology and one that's not related to the typical goal of energy production. 3. Nuclear fusion startup Positron 4 sets magnetic field record. Advanced Ignition SL, a Spanish nuclear fusion startup, has beaten their own previous magnetic field record set by their Positron device. Their device uses a configuration known as Z-pinch to produce extremely large magnetic fields for a short period of time. These strong fields can then be used to confine plasmas and create the relevant conditions for fusion. The fourth iteration of this device, this Pulsatron 4, managed to break its predecessor's record by more than a factor of 10, generating a field of 5.34 megateslas according to a story in Silicon Republic. Unfortunately, the test also resulted in some damage to parts of the reactor. A statement from the company said, The team refurbished almost all their new reactor, adding two capacitor banks to work together in a new configuration. As a result, the energy recovery from the plasma doubled from the previous one, revealing a new path to improve energy generation. However, at this point I feel like I should mention that the units of the measured magnetic field may have been incorrectly reported. Megateslas, as they said in the article, would mean that this device is as strong as a neutron star and many thousands of times stronger than the largest current Z-pinch device, the Sandia National Lab Z-machine. I think they either meant to say Tesla, which would be well within the realms of possibility, or Megagauss, which would still be an extremely large magnetic field, but still doable with current technology. Please feel free to let me know what you think in the comments. 4. Building a star in a smaller jar. Our final news story is from the Princeton Plasma Physics Lab, where our researchers have improved their understanding of the Enhanced Pedestal High Performance Mode, or EPH Mode. EPH Mode is a variation of the H Mode, or High Confinement State, that has been used in tokamaks around the world for decades. Now researchers have discovered that EPH Mode offers improvements in spherical tokamaks by reducing the density in the plasma edge. PPPL scientist Devon Battaglia said, 
As the higher energy particles stay in the plasma in larger quantities, they increase the pressure in the plasma, feeding the instabilities that throw out colder particles and further lowering the edge density. Ultimately, this fortuitous interaction allows the plasma to stay hotter with the same heating and little change to the average plasma density. This discovery could result in improved performance for future spherical tokamaks. And now for some quick bonus content, because we've got a lot to get through. First up, we have a lot of content about the new mast upgrade tokamak that has recently been completed in the UK. This was covered a lot in the last episode of Fusion News, but it's still getting a lot of press. The spherical tokamak in the UK recently achieved first plasma after a seven year upgrade that included adding a plasma exhaust system. Mast upgrade is seen as the forerunner of the UK's government funded prototype fusion power plant, spherical tokamak for energy production, or STEP for short, which is due to be constructed by 2040. Also on the UK spherical tokamak theme, there's a long read piece in the Independent about tokamak energy. The article talks about the need for fusion, the history of tokamak development and how smaller startups have now entered the picture. In an interview with David Kingham, the co-founder of Tokamak Energy, the article explores the potential impact of fusion on new technologies including innovative high temperature superconducting magnets which feature as a key part of the commercialisation plan for both Tokamak Energy in the UK and Commonwealth Fusion Systems in the US. While we're still on the topic of high temperature superconductors, there's also an interview of SciTech Daily with David Fisher of MIT who's talking about his work on neutron irradiation of these high temperature superconductors for Commonwealth Fusion Systems. And finally, have you ever wanted to try your hand at operating a tokamak reactor yourself? Well now, thanks to a new interactive website created by the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, you can. The website also provides an animated video introducing fusion and offers a chance to ask plasma physicists any burning questions you may have. As usual, links to this and all of the above are in the description. That's all for our fusion news and bonuses this week. Please like this video if you found it informative and subscribe if you'd like to see more news updates. I look forward to you tuning in in two weeks' time.